Nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains, Cherokee, North Carolina, draws many tourists, especially in the summer. If they stick to the commercial district, they may be misled by what they see. We didn't live in teepees. Little Hawk Brown says it's important to educate tourists. They come here and some might be ignorant, not knowing, knowing about our culture. And I think it's my job to inform them, inform them and make sure that they know so that they leave with better understanding. Tourists can learn at events like this, where Brown and other members of the Warriors of Anikatua perform traditional Cherokee dances. They can also visit the Tribal Museum, an arts and crafts shop, and a living history museum that shows what Cherokee life in the mid-18th century was like, from how the Cherokee hunted to the types of homes they did live in. <laughs> tourism provides the funding for all of these cultural enterprises. We've been involved in tourism for many, many years. Michelle Hicks is principal chief of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. The Cherokee say they have lived here for 11,000 years. When the U.S. government forced the tribe to move west in 1838, ancestors of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians hid in the mountains. Today, 8,000 Cherokee live on the 225 square kilometer Eastern Cherokee Reservation. Tourism is the primary source of income for the tribe with the casino, which opened in 1997, leading the way. It was controversial. I mean, it's a moral issue. It's a, it's a value issue. It was uh, quite a stir uh, when it was approved. Um, I'm not sure if you evaluated what the approval rating is today, what that would be, but I would say it, it would be pretty high. Of course, uh, the uh, incoming of the casino has brought uh, a lot of resources that um, uh, have helped us. The tribe says 80% of casino management and about a third of the employees are tribal members. Like every member, Myrtle Driver receives direct income from the casino twice a year. In June, that payment was more than $3,800. Driver used it to pay for her driveway and toward the construction of her new home. But she'd like to see more businesses in town run by the Cherokee and fewer teepees. It's, uh, you know, non-Indians that lease the property, put those damn things up in front of their doors and on top of the buildings, because they're ignorant. And as long as they get that dollar, they'd rather stay ignorant. In order for the tribe to bring in more income, they're going to have to go out there and manage, you know, these businesses themselves. She believes that time is coming. I'm very optimistic because more and more our young people are putting the value on education. Chief Hicks is also optimistic. I think over the next five to ten years, we're going to see significant growth here in Cherokee. And with that growth, Hicks says, will come businesses which will take into account not just tourists, but the Cherokee who live here. Susan Logue, VOA News, Cherokee. North Carolina.